The morning of 21st April 1934 began with the usual morning routine. Eight-year-old Helen Priestley was often seen near her home at 61 Urquhart Road in Aberdeen. She was tall for her age, bright with fair hair, who always played near her home and regularly visited the local shop to buy her mother, 33-year-old Agnes, a loaf of bread. That day she had been sent to the shop as usual, but she never returned. The day passed and her mother began to wonder where she was. She wasn't the type to run off without telling her where she was going. A few hours later, a search party made up of parents, family, friends and neighbours were scouring the area and at that point the police were notified. By two o'clock the following morning, her father, John, 47, was exhausted. He and his friend William Duncan had driven round the city in his car, asking people if they'd seen Helen, but no one had. Duncan dropped him off at home to catch a few hours sleep and promised to waken him at five o'clock to resume the search. Another neighbour, Alexander Porter, was making his way up to the priestly home at the allotted time for the search to resume when he noticed a large blue hessian sack propped up against the wall of the close. Curious, he opened it. He instantly felt sick, as inside was the body of Helen, her eyes staring out at him. Police, neighbours and Helen's family had been up and down that close frequently during the search, and the bag hadn't been there. Mr Priestley was asked if he'd seen it at two o'clock, but he replied he was sure that it wasn't there at that time. This meant the killer had dumped her body there between two and five that morning. When her body was examined during the post-mortem, the cause of death was strangulation, but there were signs of sexual assault. These details were somehow leaked to the public. Vigilante groups began to spring up, patrolling the area, armed with broom handles and handmade clubs. The police knew they had to act fast to quell these groups. The police carried out door-to-door -door inquiries and it was one of the city's largest investigations. A neighbour confirmed to police he had heard screams at around lunchtime from a house in Urquhart Road, specifically the Priestley's Close. A Slater working nearby also came forward, corroborating this neighbour's story. As for the Hessian bag, it was distinctive, and one of the breakthroughs in the case. It bore unique markings, including a faded Canadian export stamp, and the police ascertained that it wasn't widely used, but managed to trace it down to a local bakery close to Helen's home that got their supply of flour in these bags. During the interview with the baker, he remembered giving one of these blue bags to a woman some time before. He gave a rough description of her, but it wasn't clear enough. Police turned their attention closer to home, and when asked about their lives, the priestlies told the police they were well liked by most but there was one family that had issues with them. They were the Donalds, who lived in the same close. They told the police that one of their number, Jeannie Donald, held the biggest grudge against them. The Priestleys couldn't remember the reasons for the falling out, although Jeannie Donald later claimed it was because of a row over a water leak in a third floor flat, and Donald had sided with the occupier. Over time, the animosity had grown between them and Mrs Priestley ignored her because she simply didn't like her. Donald was the iron rod in the household and had in the past scowled at young Helen as she played in the close. Her husband, Alexander, was a barber and she had a daughter around the same age as Helen 
also called Jeannie. It was young Jeannie who gave some damning evidence against her mother. She told the police that the bread the family had that day was different from what they normally had. They went back to the baker and he confirmed that the loaf the young girl described was the one Helen had bought every day for her mother. During an examination of the Donald's home, red stains were found at the bottom of a cupboard. Dr Robert Richards, one of the pathologists who helped in the PM of Helen, told police he believed they were blood stains. That was enough for the police to make arrests. Donald and her husband were arrested at their home. Outside, a large crowd had already gathered. The police fought their way through and escorted the couple into the waiting van. Results on the scraping were found not to be blood as initially suspected, but the police weren't going to give up on holding Mrs Donald. However, following questioning, Mr Donald was released, as people at the barber's shop where he worked confirmed he was there at the time of the child's murder. When he returned home, he packed up and took his daughter away from Aberdeen. The Donald's home produced further evidence. The bread Helen bought was found. A newspaper dated 19th April had bloodstains on it, as confirmed following tests. Traces of blood were also found on a packet of soap flakes, a scrubbing brush, a cloth, and some was found on a piece of linoleum under the sink. Helen Priestley was buried in secret, such was the Ferrari in the city, in the Allenvale Cemetery. Her body was exhumed six weeks later to take samples of hair, skin and fingernails. Meanwhile, Donald's trial began on Monday 16th July at the High Court in Edinburgh and lasted six days. The Crown presented evidence from Professor John Glaister of the University of Glasgow that hair found on Helen's body, as well as in the Hessian sack, was indeed that of Jeannie Donald, as samples of her hair had been taken from a hairbrush in jail. Fibres on the sack were also found in the Donald's home. Donald's defence team asked how a woman could have sexually assaulted Helen as the evidence had shown. However, three independent pathologists told the court the injuries had been caused by the shaft of a hammer or broom handle to make it look as though she'd been assaulted by a man. This was damning, and in just 18 minutes the court found her guilty of murder. Throughout the proceedings, Jeannie Donald had shown little emotion, except when her daughter had given evidence regarding the bread. The judge, Craigie Aitchison, Lord Aitchison, placed the black cap on his head for the first time in his career as he sentenced her to hang on 13th August. She was taken to Craigie's prison in Aberdeen, where she was to spend her final days. On 4th August, however, this was commuted to life imprisonment and she was transferred to the women's prison at Duke Street in Glasgow. After ten years, she was released and died in obscurity in 1976. No reason for the killing was ever established. It is worth noting that because of the exhumation of Helen and the distress it caused her family, a new rule was introduced to the city. From then on, hair samples, nail clippings and tissue samples had to be taken before the burial of the person in cases of sudden suspicious deaths. It was hoped that never again was a family to suffer like the Priestleys. <laughs>